Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Basic things all businesses should know about excise tax. Oh, come on. Everyone knows the basics of an excise tax. They're the thing that makes the cost of your alcohol and tobacco ridiculously high. Talk about a regressive tax. I tell you what. You know what you could do with your excise tax? You could take it and exit stage right with it. Whatever that means. Anyways, first an attempt at a joke. It's not the president in our life. I never heard of half of these guys, and the ones I do know are way past the prime. It's the life in our president. Most of these guys never had a prime. Or lack thereof. This guy here is dead. Cross him off then. What's that, Phil? Well, maybe I should have taken the time to vote. My cat, my rules. Maybe we should take a vote. A round. Whatever, Phil. I couldn't vote last time round. I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it? I was too effing busy. And vice versa. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. How many push-ups you want to do here? Give the devil his due. But now the devil wants his due. The big guy generally takes 10%. IRS Tax Tip 2022-116, August 1st, 2022. Excise tax is an indirect tax on specific goods, services, and activities. So they're going to be taxing specific things. It's kind of interesting to think about why they might apply a tax to specific goods and services. You might be thinking, well, why would they tax this specific good and service and not all goods and services? Isn't that kind of like a discriminatory practice towards certain goods and services? So there's various different reasons. For example, federal excise tax is usually imposed on the sale of things like fuel. If you think about something like fuel, for example, note that the use of the fuel usually means that people are going to be driving on the roads and the roads are like a public good. So the idea there might be that if you have more people buying more fuel, they're going to be using the road more and therefore they should be paying more for the public good than someone that doesn't use the road at all would be one of the kind of arguments. That public good argument might be able to be applied to things like airline tickets, heavy uh, trucks and highway tractors, which again are using uh, the infrastructure more so than other people and therefore getting a benefit profiting from you know that infrastructure of the roads and so on indoor uh, tanning tires tobacco and other goods and services so when you get into things like tobacco and things like alcohol for example those are probably more likely to be uh, incurring more and more taxes because the idea would be that you're going to try to discourage things like uh, tobacco and alcohol uh, the, so there's kind of arguments on both sides of that kind of argument because it seems like a logical argument. If you increase the taxes, then the demand for alcohol and tobacco will go down. But at the same time, other people might argue, well, you're kind of taxing people that are usually at the lower income side of things because people that consume tobacco and uh, alcohol are disproportionate to lower income. And therefore, it might be a, progress a, a regressive uh, type of tax falling more heavily on the lower income. There's also arguments that be made saying, well, if someone is addicted to something, then when you raise the price of it, it may not actually result in them consuming less because <laughs> they're addicted to it. So that's that's kind of the point of the whole process. But in any case, you can see why those taxes uh, get imposed for different kind of reasons. So 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 now we got to think about how is it going to function? How do we pay for these? What's the structure? What's the process? So businesses that are subject to excise tax generally must file form 720 quarterly federal excise tax returns. There's a link to that here to report the tax on the uh, to the IRS. This is commonly included in the cost of the product. So clearly the tax is usually passed on to the consumer, which of course is the is the idea in general, because again, the kind of idea would be the people that are using the public goods are the ones that kind of should be paying more for them since they're provided by you know the government, like the roads and whatnot. And the idea being for the tobacco, it's specifically designed simply to increase the price, or that's the argument, it's designed to generate revenue, but we don't talk about that. They're real, it's designed to virtuously curb people's uh, addictive habits or something like that. And so it's supposed to be in the price because that's supposed to work its magic. So in any case, so it's in the price. So while the end consumer doesn't usually see the excise tax on the receipt, 
It may be charged at the time of import, sale by the manufacturer, sale by the retailer, uh, used by the manufacturer or consumer. So you can see along the, the production line until it gets to like the end product, the tax could be imposed at some point in there. And of course, by the end that it hits the actual consumer, it's included in the price. So many excise taxes go into trust funds for projects related to the tax products or services such as highways and airport improvements. So once again, you, you could see the argument there where you're saying, why, why, why would one product, you're taxing one product, that doesn't make any sense. It seems kind of discriminatory, it seems arbitrary. But if one product is being used more, they're getting an advantage from the infrastructure which we all pay for, then the idea would be that uh, that they're going to get a disproportional amount of tax to provide those infrastructures that they're getting more of a benefit from. So excise taxes are independent for income taxes. And by the way, uh, you can make a same argument for the tobacco. People try to make that argument as well. Like tobacco, they say, well, we've got to increase the cost of tobacco because we're going to apply that to health care and the people that use tobacco are going to have a higher uh, health care cost. So some people try to use that argument a little bit well, it's a lot more indirect of an argument uh, and than someone that uses the roads, <laughs> clearly. They're use, you know, it's because, uh, and, and again, if you go down that road making that argument, you can make the same argument for like obesity and Diet Cokes and, or, you know, Coke, you know, and uh, uh, soda pops and those kind of things. So it can get, you know, that's a slippery slope of regulation if you, but in any case, Often the retailer, manufacturer, or importer must pay the excise tax to the IRS in file form 720. So some excise taxes are collected by a third party. The third party then sends the tax to the IRS and files the form 720. For example, the tax on an airline ticket generally is paid by the purchaser and collected by the airline. When to file, businesses must file the form for each quarter of the calendar year. Here are the due dates. You got quarter one, January, February, and March. Those are the three months in the first quarter. 12 months divided by four, three months, January, February, March. It's due deadline, April. So you got the first three months, which are due by the end of the following month after the first quarter. Quarter two, which has three months of April, May, and June. And the deadline to be filing for it is the month after that, which is July. Quarter three, which has three months of July, August, September. The deadline for that quarter is October 31st, the month after. Quarter four, October, November, December. And that quarter, the deadline being January of the following year. So if the deadline for filing a tax return falls on Saturday or Sunday, legal holiday, the due date is the next business day. How to file? The IRS does not accept pet paper excise tax returns. So you gotta use some high techness in this area. However, electronic filing is strongly uh, encouraged. The IRS does, does accept, I'm sorry, the IRS does accept paper excise tax returns. So you can still use the paper returns apparently. However, what they would like to prefer and what they've been pushing for for many different areas, electronic filing is strongly encouraged when possible. To make this process easier for taxpayers, uh, the contact information for all approved e-file transmitters, there's a link to that here, of excise forms is listed on irs.gov. So you can go to the link, irs.gov, or you can go there, irs.gov. Business can submit form online 24 hours a day. When businesses e-file, they get confirmation that the IRS received their form, which is nice. So also, e-filing reduces processing time and errors. So in other words, if you paper file it, then you're not going to get the 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 verification that they've received it quite as easily. It could still get lost in the mail and whatnot and that kind of stuff. So to electronically file business business taxpayers will have to pay the provider's fee for online submission. So there could be actually a fee for that, which is kind of uh, that's kind of lame, but it is what it is. The excise tax forms available for electronic filing are you got the form 720 quarterly federal excise tax return form 2290 heavy highway vehicle use tax form 8849 claim for refund of excise taxes schedule one two three five six and eight there's links to those items here links to this other stuff that we said there's links to links to this in the description